Hey everybody, it's Party Leech, welcoming you back to another episode of our Planet Zoo Franchise Mode Let's Play, where we have big things planned for the month of March. So we're going to dive right on into Elite Zoo North with no time to waste a 5-star zoo, nearly 1.5 million bucks in the bank, and over 5,000 visitors. Pretty consistently. Doing pretty good. Let's dive on in, folks, and as always, as I do, I just want to mention, if you've been enjoying this series and you'd like to see it continue, please do not hesitate to keep letting me know by leaving those likes and comments down below. It makes such a big difference in how I approach content on the channel. I look at the number of likes and comments for every episode to get an understanding of people's interest levels, and I enjoy reading through all the comments. You've always got some great ideas, some great feedback, some great thoughts, uh, and often some great banter. Um, so it's, it's always good fun for me as well, uh, and it really helps me make decisions on the channel. So again, if you want to see more Planet Zoo, that's the best way to let me know is by leaving a like and a comment down below. And if you really enjoy this series, I try to mention this only once a month at most because I don't like, you know, hammering it, hammering people over the head with it. But if you've really been enjoying this series, then I humbly request maybe you check out becoming a patron or a channel member. Uh, Patreon and channel memberships are great ways to help support creators. If you think of it like a Netflix subscription or something along those lines, uh, you know, if you've really been enjoying the, uh, the stuff on the channel, if you've really been enjoying the series, uh, there'll be a link under the eye at the top right corner uh, for Patreon. It'll be in the description down below as well. So if you want to use Patreon, you'll have those options. And if you'd rather not use Patreon and you'd go directly through YouTube, then there should be a giant join button uh, below the video. And if you click on that, it'll guide you through the rest of the process. Again, it's not an obligation at all, but it does make a massive difference uh, in just the sustainability of a series and things like that. Uh, and again, I only try to mention it once per month at most uh, per series because I don't want to, you know, mention it too often or anything. So I hope you don't mind my little ramble spiel there. But uh, yeah, apart from that, just want to thank you all for joining and watching along. This series started in November. It is now March so, you know, it's great to have uh, such longevity and to have so many people joining for uh, this. I mean, we made this, <laughs> right? Uh, and, and I always think there's something grand about that. Now, I will mention uh, one of the perks of being a patron or a channel member is naming rights. And I want to get into a little bit more details about that uh, as we start diving into some of the uh, management stuff we have to do. So last month, uh, what I said was... Um, We'll be naming animals as well as staff members. And as a result of that, we actually got quite a few staff names. If I go and organize by name, you'll see we've got quite a few staff names. And since then, I've seen quite a few of you, quite a few of you, sorry, suggest um, or ask for uh, naming as well. And I've noted it all down. Uh, or at least I've tried to note it all down. I may have missed some. I haven't implemented it today because I want to implement it in the next episode because in this episode, I want to mention to those of you that might not know about this perk, if you are a channel member or a patron uh leave me a message and let me know what you like uh your name to be implemented as so either um if you're a channel member i can see very easily in the youtube comments because a little icon shows up next to your name if you're a patron then send me a private message on patreon as well uh, if you have a job preference, let me know. If you don't have a job preference, that's great. It'll be, it's a little bit easier to implement names without job preferences because then I don't have to uh, wait until we hire new people of a certain occupation. Um, but, uh, but yeah, and just as a note, that is only for patrons and channel members. Uh, of course, naming you know rides and places and uh, enclosures, that's open for everybody, but this is something that's special and uh, unique to channel members and patrons. So, uh, just wanted to throw that out there. Now, I said I was going to do management as I said that, and I apologize that I didn't, uh, but I did want to quickly uh, take care of our exhibits because they, um, they have been, I, I've ignored them for a couple of sessions, I think, so I want to get that done. Uh, and as I'm doing that, I just want to say as well, uh, so last month, as I said, I also mentioned renaming animals. And this month, <sighs> so I, I saw some interesting comments, actually, uh, as a result of renaming animals and uh, they, they got me thinking uh, there they got me thinking uh, many of you or at least some of you were suggesting that it's unfortunate that by renaming the animals uh, we've lost their connection to where they're from and I hadn't initially thought about that I hadn't initially considered that but then as uh, you know as I saw those comments and as I contemplated it you know hindsight 2020 I was like you know that that's a good point um, so I'm, I'm a little torn on animal renaming because while I personally gain 
uh, enjoyment through, you know, cheeky names and stuff like that, uh, you know, puns and all that, y'all know me by now, uh, I, I, while I enjoy that thoroughly, I also, um, I also like to, I'm just trying to match up females and males here, I also like this, you know, tie in to, uh, cultural heritage of the animals or so if you will so i'm really torn uh so for now while uh i and i should say we try to come to a decision come to a conclusion uh i'm going to say we're not going to rename animals yet maybe we'll revisit that decision um you know come next month or the middle of this month wow 15k and that's not even all my exhibit animals wild uh also i mean i've been trying to hone and perfect the approach on the channel I, I see your feedback all the time and i want to mention uh do not worry about giving me feedback it's greatly appreciated y'all are very polite uh and it's an important skill to be able to give feedback and i can say not once have i seen a piece of feedback and gone wow that was rude uh so i just wanted to say don't be afraid uh don't think i'll you know take offense unless you're trying to be offensive of course uh <laughs> not that i like it's not gonna you know sticks and stones and whatnot but um Point being, point being, let's get rid of you. Um, I've been trying to improve the viewing experience as much as possible. So if there's any, you know, thoughts or opinions, uh, let me know. Uh, you know, one of the things was that managing these exhibits, every episode was getting repetitive and boring. So I adjusted that and now we do it every couple of episodes. We make enough money off of it and uh, we get the we get the job done, so to speak. So I feel like that works pretty well um, and it, it doesn't, uh, you know, drag on. Uh, too, too, too often. Um, I wish I had a Komodo dragon in the zoo so I could zoom in on it when I said drag on. Okay, back on task here. Let's go ahead and last couple. Again, this time, of course, it's dragged on a bit because I've distracted myself by talking. And of course, just before we get to the Titan beetles, I, uh, reach my cap. We have so many exhibit animals. I mean, it's great because we make a ton of money. Look at that. That's what? That's 24k made and we haven't even moved forward at all, uh, in time. On which note, folks, take a look at the year count. Take a look at the year count. It is almost a hundred years of the zoo. Almost. We're not there yet. We're not there yet. But uh, I do have something special planned for year 100. And I don't know when in year 100. Will it be Jan 1? Will it be December 4th? A day, obviously, that's you know special to me. Uh, will it be something else? I'm not 100% sure. But uh, I do have something special planned. Many of you have already guessed it out. Um, but, uh, I need to just figure out the details of, uh, of the grand plan, so to speak. I'll trade out some of these. There we go. Go ahead, send you to the Trade Center. I need to get rid of all of them. They do have social requirements, right? Uh, let's go ahead and pop all of you away. Another 2k. Easy money. Easy money. Now, animal trading, trade history. I just want to see if we ended up, uh, wow, are you kidding me? No way. That's hilarious. So my mess up last session where I got the snow leopard that was extremely old um, or older than I would have liked. Net profit. Net profit. I made 210 conservation credits off of it. If I'm reading this correctly, because there's Yule when I bought him for 560 and then when I sold him immediately afterwards for 750. Wow. <laughs> I feel a little dirty, I'm not going to lie, but it was an accident. I thought I paid 700 for him. Uh, I didn't mean to, you know, make that much of a profit, but geez, that, uh, well, hey, you know, sometimes making a mistake is, uh, is good, uh, I guess. Now, on the topic of making a mistake, there was one mistake I made here that I make often that I'm going to fix right off the bat here. Um, so, so again, we go to the Zoopedia and we look up snow leopards. If I can find my alphabet here, L-M-N-O-P-Q-R-S. There we go. Snow leopard. That is negative 4 to negative 20. No, sorry, negative 4 to positive 22, even now as I say it. And the reason why it happens is because when I'm recording, I'm like, in my my head's like running at, you know, 20 miles a minute. And so I go, minus 4, minus 22. Okay, right. I don't know why it's written backwards. Party, because it's not written backwards. <laughs> so, my bad. Uh, negative 4 to negative 22. Let's go ahead and adjust all this before animals start freezing and, and complaining about that. I wouldn't want, wouldn't want that at all. Go ahead and adjust this. There we go. Uh, and, and again, don't don't worry about pointing that out. It, it's very. I'm very glad that y'all did point it out because yeah, I would have completely uh, thought I'd done it right. And this is a problem that I've I've had a couple times. I made this mistake many times, and it's because of that reason. It's because I um, kind of go, oh yeah, no, we uh, well we we <laughs> the game obviously has it written wrong. 
It's not actually what I think, but that's, that's apparently, well, that must be what comes across. Uh, all right, so all that's been corrected. Need to do that. Um, and one other thing that I need to correct is over, where are we here? Trying to navigate just from up on high. There we go. Folks, how did I miss this? How did I miss this? We have ourselves the most adorable baby white tigers. Now, I think it is uh, my moral obligation to mention that white tigers are not good environmentally. They are not excellent. They are adorable. And I did have the goal to breed them, but just thought I should mention that typically, well, <laughs> I guess not in game, but typically they are genetically inferior. These guys though, oh my God, that's amazing. Those are amazing genes. Man, look at this majestic beast. That's, those are great stats. These might be some of the best stats we've seen in our uh, zoo ever. My, oh my, wow, that's awesome. And here is this mom or dad teaching these guys a lesson. It's mom. Uh, oh, mommy's getting old. That's not good. And dad, dad's, uh, dad, dad's looking okay. That's looking okay. Um... So I have to figure out my uh, my breeding program here with uh, Akshay and Ronith. Ronith? Ronith? Not sure how to say that. Um, but uh, let's see. If I if I take a look at my animal storage here real quick. So just a little bit of management stuff first before we get into our time lapses, folks. I hope you all don't mind. Again, it is a part of the game. Um, and uh, from what I've seen of the comments, most of you all don't mind. Um, okay, so we've got uh, two male. We've got three male white Bengal tigers. We have four male white Bengal tigers. We do not have a single female white Bengal tiger. Okay. We do have a lot of female ti tigers, though. How did, how did this happen? They are all male. And what are, you, what are your stats like? Also good stats? Yeah. Huh. These are also good stats. I guess I just hadn't noticed that these guys... But, I mean, uh, I mean Akshay and, and uh, Ronith here, we, we bred. There, there are babies. So yeah, that's what makes it extra special, but um, yeah, it's weird because it, it, it's 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 a genetic uh, deficiency, if I'm not mistaken. And feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure um, typically they have worse worse genes. Uh, at least the fertility on one of them's low. Might trade Akshay out because of that low fertility when he becomes an adult. Might make a pretty penny off of him. Again, white Bengal tigers they go for a decent price. Uh, but the next step would be, I mean, if we get a female in here. Right, if we get like Vedika or Syra, who has better stats, Syra has better stats, a little bit on the older side. So if she comes in when um, Aradhya passes away, I don't think it would be inbreeding. Let's check you with, yeah, it is not inbreeding. Bre inbreeding. Veer is who we cannot have in there again with, uh, with any of the, the female tigers we have, I believe. So, okay. We've got options. Probably bring... Syra in. She's got good stats. Amrita. Mm, immunity's kind of low. Amira. I don't know if Amira can breed with... Yes, she can. But infertile. Oh, no. Why? She's not on the meds or anything. Well, that's unfortunate. Maybe uh, <laughs> below average species fertility, you don't say. Could maybe send uh, trade her out or something. Uh, or release through the wild. Okay, well, we we have it's going to be some while yet before we have to to enact those breeding plans, but uh, we have the options. We know that, and hopefully the tigers are going to start making us a lot more money now that we have um, these extremely high appeal. Everything's so high appeal there now. Good stuff. Good stuff. Some of these views aren't that great, but it's all good. All right, now apart from that, we have a couple of animals over here that need trading out. These guys we got at the end of the last session. Okay, the camera is for some reason not moving. There we go. Uh, we got some of these tortoises at the end of the last session. I didn't want to trade them then, so let's go ahead and trade them now. Uh, let's see. Watkins, our pronghorn antelope. These are great genes. So let's see. I wish. I, so again, I wish there was a button here that I could click. That's like compare to market, and it just pops open over here, and just tells me what the prices on the market are right now, and then I could price accordingly instead i gotta go here i gotta click here I, I cannot believe i made a profit off of that snow leopard sale i cannot believe it 
Um, and what are we looking for? Pronghorn antelope. Pronghorn antelope. Now again, my my critique about UI and UX is all from a from a good place. I again, it, when I it used to be a part of my career, so I get very you know particular about some of these things uh, because it used to be my job. <laughs> so it's just quality of life stuff. Male appeal is one one two five. Let's see, what are we looking at here? One one two five male, relatively young. What are your genes like? Oh my God, we're looking at the two hundreds at most. Maybe no, he's he's albino. Okay, maybe 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 two hundred is a fair price. Let's go with that. Watkins, away with you. Uh, trade or come on, let me come on. Oh God, game. Gotta drag this to thirty. Sure, it's because I can't uh, type in for some reason. Uh, on the topic of UI UX. Okay, so now the Galapagos giant tortoises. Let's see. Can I? Any species helps me clear the filter more easily. Where are we? Galapagos giant tortoises. So, you serious right now? Um, let's take a look at both sexes. Come on, game. Unfilter. There we go. All right. So we have a male, Miguel. We have two males. Now, there are no males on the market right now for conservation credits. So I, I mean, I could really hike up the prices. But just for a reference here. Come on. Come on. Load on up. There we go. Um, 560 bucks. I don't know what that translates into conservation credits. Let's try. I wish I had a reference. This is obviously not right. Let's try, let's see, for you, let's try 300. Pablo, pretty good genes over here. Let's try 500 here. I don't think that's asking too much for a creature like this. And Manuel, hmm, let's go with 450. Actually, hold on. Ah, too late to check. I wanted to see what the suggested price was. Here, let's go with, let's go with, stick with 500. Slightly lower size gene, but not the end of the world. We'll see how that goes. Now, Evita, you're a female. There are some other females available. Um, 55, 65, 150. Wow, they're really cheap. They're also really poor genetics. Uh, so maybe 300. I think ours is pretty good. Evita. Come on. Let me... Decent stats. Let's go with 200. Oh, almost sent it through at 54. Okay, let's try that. All right. We'll see if we make any of these sales. We're at 9131 right now. Hopefully we'll make some of those sales. And, uh... Oh, well, Pedro's already gone. But we made one of them. Yeah, people are going to be looking for... The Galapagos tortoise males right now. Uh, and hopefully I'll be able to provide. Okay, so that's that taken care of. One thing I wanted to do this session, again, during the time-lapse last session... Uh, I mentioned that I'd forgotten to do something, and this was a great suggestion I got in the comments a couple episodes ago, uh, but I completely forgot to do it for some reason. Uh, the suggestion was that perhaps this um, dome, you know, hard shelter area could be moved to over here. I don't think that's a bad idea at all. I think, so the thing is that when you're out over here, uh, you know, at the Aurora Borealis, uh, Borealis, oh my god, <gasps> Also glad I came here. Look at that. Look at this view. You are like, what is that? Maybe 10 feet away from the bear? Look at this view. Oh my god. This is why I like staying paused every once in a while and just going around and seeing what's up. Would have never caught this. I've been meaning to. I've wanted to see this. I wanted to see this area get used like this. And look, it's empty. No one's here to Catch this momentous occasion. I gotta influence more people's coming over here. They they usually go... Usually do come through. Yeah, got some people coming through. Gotta find a way to get more people here. Or it could be a nice, you know, um... Isolated little corner, I suppose. But that's really cool. Yeah, that's really cool. That's exactly what I wanted. I want these guys to come up over here and play and, and just provide this excellent view. That is so cool. Anyway, so what I was getting at was uh, that view already exists. So why, um, like, wh while there's a good view from over here, from over here, there isn't really that great a view if the animals aren't coming around this way. So let's give them a reason to come around that way, and that reason is the uh, hard shelter. Um, 
and I think that's a great suggestion. Um, we also we want to make sure that you can see the stars, right? Uh, let's unlock that snap there, something like that. And then this should make for a much better view from up over here, and people will hopefully uh, donate more over there. Great, great idea. Great idea. So let's go ahead and drop you down over here, maybe. I think that's good. Go ahead and smooth the train out a little bit because of that little bump. All right. Um, use your size. There we go. Nice and easy. The view from there should be pretty good. This is not appropriate. Got to reduce that intensity just slightly. There we go. There we go. Perfect. Perfect. And I don't know why these coolers... Oh, you know what? I do know why. Well, actually, no, that doesn't make any sense. See, when a cooler is in a uh, habitat, it is automatically powered. So these coolers are getting power. Um, maybe it's because you're at zero. Maybe I need to drop you down to, like, negative four. That should keep things snowy over here as well. Negative four. Yeah, I just... I don't know why we're not getting snow here because the train is painted correctly. I can double check. Yeah, see, it's painted correctly. Let's make the intensity 100%. Yep. I'm not sure what's going on there. Oh, one thing I do need to do, though, is, as you may have noticed, is the power coverage doesn't cover all the light. So we do need to nudge these guys down a little bit. Uh, just the generator, the transformer, rather. I keep wanting to call it a generator. Rather, I keep calling it a generator. Not wanting to. It's literally what I do. Um, let's hide that, please. And sure, I guess I can tuck you over here. Done. Done. And now we've got power, we've got water, purified, excellent. And we've got an interesting viewpoint over here. Now hopefully they actually use it. I need to maybe, well they've got some feeding stuff over here as well, and the feeding tray. It should be coming through. We'll see, we'll see how that plays out. I wonder if I need another feeder, because it looks like some of the food is just being dropped off on the side over here, which is inappropriate. Go ahead and put another heating tray down there so that should really bring them down over here they are able to if i'm not mistaken climb past this let me just double check yep that's not an issue they're able to climb past this oh but they're not able to enter or maybe i need to unpause for that maybe i need to unpause for that and if i check real quick there's only one last thing i want to do before i deal with that and that is before i unpause that is correct this spelling Thank nick you can tell this is not a word I use often. Nickel. Nickel. Nickel and dime? There was corrections in the comments. I should have written down with the corrections. Nickel and dime. That's how you spell nickel, right? Yeah, I, I, uh, I'm i used to, I don't know why, L-E-R-E, -E, that kind of stuff. So I was like, oh, yeah, nickel. So I guess you could call it a typo or just a mistake, me not knowing better. Say nickel and dime. Thank you for the correction. All right, folks, let's go ahead and hit play, see what the animals do, see if they are able to use this space. And then uh, shortly after, we're going to be working on our snow leopard enclosure. Um, and uh, we... we uh, I got a lot of great feedback about the uh, the workshop, by the way. Some fantastic feedback uh, with regards to colors, with regards to how to you know execute the roof better. Uh, and I'm really excited to, to work uh, off of that feedback. But I think that'll be maybe next session. I've got some like I'm really excited for the monastery complex at the uh, the Himalayas. Uh, so I, I think what I'm going to do is come back to this maybe next session, or if there's time at the end of this session, I might do that because I got, again, I got some fantastic suggestions and I always appreciate it. Don't, don't take this to mean that I, that I'm upset or anything. I want to be crystal clear. Uh, I love the suggestions and feedback, uh, which is why I want to give it the proper time of day. Um, but there is a bit of overhauling to do, mainly with regards to colors. Many of you were pointing out that, you know, it's a little bit too much red and yellow. Feels like McDonald's, feels like, uh, you know, a box of fries and stuff like that. I find that hilarious. Uh, but I, I see what you're getting at. So I might recolor some of these, might change the rooftop a bit as well, add two tones of red. Uh, many of you were actually saying that it looked quite nice when the center didn't have any roofing. And I don't disagree. Uh, so let's see what we can do about that. And then, uh, I think we are going to keep this back open, make this out of glass maybe. So there's some nice natural light coming through. Uh, one thing I do want to do, though, is... Let's see, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, and number. Seven. Whoops. Not in the group. Seven. That's the correct number of reindeer, right? Let me just double check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Is it nine reindeer, or is it seven reindeer? Someone in the comments said seven, and I was like, seven sounds like too few. Anyways, y'all need to let me know. As you can tell, 
Christmas isn't really something that I grew up with. Maybe you couldn't tell. Um, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> Let me go ahead and make sure this is done right, though. Gotta get... That's way too... That's also way too big. There we go. There we go. There. No, no. That's me trying to recolor the light game. There it is. Beautiful. Gee, I wonder who that is. Alright, awesome. Uh, so yeah, lots of work to do there. Love the feedback. Keep it coming. Uh, some great ideas about the candy canes and stuff as well. Lots to do, but it's something we'll maybe tackle later. For now, yeah, let's go ahead and hit play. I want to see and make sure that our uh, animals are able to come in here, and then I want to work on our snow leopards. Wait, are they all three up here? No. That was a weird just visual glitch, I guess. You're able to come down. You're able to come over. Mm, yeah, this is a problem. Oh, no. There. Oh, there we go. There we go. There's a recalculation. Beautiful. They are still able to get in here. That's great. They're able to come across. And so, again, hopefully, whenever they need hard shelter, hopefully they will do exactly that. I've ever seen a polar bear play with a rubbing pillar. I wonder if we'll catch a glimpse of that today. Come on. Come on. Get in there. Get in there. Imagine being this close to one of these, though. Oh, that's so cute. Little tippy taps. Imagine being this close. This, the little misting and stuff is go. <gasps> Are you kidding me? <laughs> I, a rare occasion where I wish I had the setup for a face cam. I literally, I couldn't make noise because I was just staring with my jaw on the floor. That, what, my week has been made. We should just call it an episode over here. Does it get better than that? I don't know if it does. Oh my god, I'm so happy. I'm so... <laughs> I'm so happy. That was adorable. It's nice to just take a moment every once in a while and just watch the animals play. Alright, um, enough over here. Let's do a little bit of management stuff up over here before we hop into our time lapse, because there is some stuff to do. It's all a great suggestion, actually. Well, actually, hold on. Before I get into those suggestions, I need to do a couple things. Habitat... Snow leopard. Let's go ahead and make sure you have something to eat off of. Down over there. Because that's not something I did. Uh, now, okay, so it was pointed out that they are not able to enter the water. Not only that, it was also suggested that for the sake of realism, perhaps this should actually be a um, steel mesh. Because then it feels like the water is actually flowing through. And I like that suggestion. I like that idea a lot. Really uh, clever, clever thought. Um, I don't know if I can do... Why can I not? Why can I not? What's the problem here? Terrain too uneven for placement. Okay. Uh, so let's go ahead and take care of the other thing I need to take care of, which is this. Now I should be able to edit you. There. That feels a bit more right. And let's go ahead and smooth this terrain out a little bit because we need to make sure that these guys are actually able to enter in here. Let's make the entrance over here, just like that. And where's our water? There we go. And that should do the trick. I think we can get the water higher as well this time around. Feels like it. And I wonder if that is sloped enough. You know what? Just to be just to be safe, let's undo that. And let's... Uh, Pull this up as well. Make sure that our bears, when we add them, are able to get into the water too. There we go. There we go. That that should do the trick. Oh, this is looking really nice. I'm really liking how this is coming along already. Let's just do a quick check over here. Traversable area. Yes, you're able to get into the water. You're able to get around. No escape routes. Oh, no. There are escape routes. I forgot about this. Uh, we'll have to fix that ASAP. Power source failed. Get a mechanic in here. Power source failing. Get a mechanic in here. So clearly we're going to be hiring more mechanics and stuff. Again, with regards to the name, uh, naming and whatnot. Can't find an accessible staff room. Okay, that's just because we don't have enough staff rooms, I guess. I need to add another one. We're heading to one, though, it says. Silly is without power. Is that because power source is failing? Mechanic on route. Yes, I believe that is why. Um, there we go. That's been fixed. Actually, looking at the toilet block there reminds me. Over here, it was suggested that these guys need to maybe be different colors. I'm gonna try. How's that? Mm. There we go. 
Too much, uh, too much red and yellow. It blends in nicely for now. Again, we'll we'll come in and nuance that later. I think we'll come in and nuance that later. Let's go ahead and say hello to everybody. And I believe an inspector just came through. Maybe I'm mistaken, but I do want to see what that inspector had to say. What was that roar? Is that a snow leopard roar? All right, hello everybody. Welcome to Elite Zoo North. What else have we got going on here? Now I should actually yes get rid of uh, this because I will never I will never release a Bactrian camel to the wild for 500. Even if I do release it to the wild, I don't care about the money. Well, let's get rid of that. Get a different challenge in there, uh, and let's see if we can get those guest numbers up. Now actually on the topic of that, it was suggested that maybe I don't have advertising going. I think you might be right. Let me check my report here. Five stars across the board, of course. Wonderful. Remember when that used to be a challenge? Uh, remember when that used to be a challenge? Um, crime. Replace all. Replace all. Get the, all that fixed. And let's take a look at this. Ticket price is fair. Litter is disgusting. Where is the litter? Okay, well, hopefully it got cleaned up. Fair enough. Um, is it under finances? Marketing. There we go. I do have this TV commercial active. Okay, fair. I could do more. Take some new animals and stuff. This is good for, you know, when kids get interested in stuff. Um, <laughs> viral videos. God. It's always terrible when a client's like, I want a viral video. It's like, you don't... That's not how that works. <laughs> not how that works. Though I will say, Copenhagen Zoo had its baby polar bear. If you're looking for a cute polar bear, Copenhagen Zoo had a baby polar bear um, finally, like, peek out of its cave and stuff for, I think, the first time. The video's on YouTube. Check it out. It's adorable. It is adorable. It's so shy. It's so shy. It's so cute. Um, let's go with the comedy show marketing. Why not? We've got the extra money. We want to get more people coming through. So let's go ahead and do this. What's the worst that could happen? We go bankrupt. <laughs> That's the worst that could happen. Multiple animals have low welfare over here. The Titan Beetle. Is it because the exhibit is nasty? Yes, it is. Let's get a keeper in here. We need some more keepers as well, apparently. I guess a keeper's already there right now. Fair enough. And did it say the animal was stressed? Did it say our grizzly bear was stressed out? Isn't anymore, so that's fine, but... Hmm. Let's just check over here. Oh, yeah, this is looking good. We obviously need to, uh... Oh, yeah, look at the tree! I mean, obviously we need to do a lot more to make this feel like Christmas, right? But it's getting there. We're gonna have to light up the, uh... You know, the, the, the sides and everything. The rooftop gotta light up on the inside as well. And <laughs> there's Rudolph guiding us. I'm liking this, though. I'm liking this. And not a lot of people up here. I wonder why that is. We've got high appeal polar bears. They are hanging out over here. Look at, oh my god, look at you. Hanging out over here. They're taking a nap over here. They provide for a good view. I need to adjust this, but I don't want to do this while they're in here because it'll box them up. They should be providing a good view, but... Oh yeah, there we go. People are coming through. Dangerous animal has escaped. Hop back in, buddy. Hop back in. Don't hop down. Don't hop down. Wow. That jump animation needs some fixing. <laughs> that jump animation needs some fixing. Yeah, they are able to pop out. Alright, let's... um. Oh, that looks like you're fine. <gasps> Wolverine is about to die of old age. Oh, of course I have to zoom in when you're taking it. Leaving your spots behind. Alright, Wolverine. Been a good boy. Wolverine dies under the red sky. That's rather beautiful. Oh no. Oh, I shouldn't be watching this. Man. Always hurts extra with the wolves. Always hurts extra with the wolves. All right, well, let's go ahead and get, uh, get a vet in there. Zariel has passed away at the same time as well. Yeah, some of these animals are starting to get old. The zoo is getting old. 99 years, it's wild. Um, okay, we're good here, we're good here. Just waiting for... I could, again, artificially make it morning, but I, I, I try to avoid doing that if possible. Um... Bears still in here? They are still in here, so I don't want to adjust this still. It's okay. All right, where do we have any people here? Wow, it is like pitch black. People are coming through, though. There we go. 
would buy stuff over here. They would use the washrooms and things like that. Donation. I mean, I could probably get rid of this donation bin. There's never going to be a view down here. Go to you. Vendors are swapping out. Ooh, yes. You come through. You get a great view of the polar bears. I mean, come on. That's a great view, right? You go, wow, look at that. You're getting educated. E educated? Educated. That's the word. Taking some pictures on your phone. That's right. Good stuff. Okay, they seem pretty happy. I'm watching the whole family there. They're going to watch them get... Hey! What? Put the money in the bin. <laughs> what are you... Why, right, if you want to put in that... <gasps> I'm so glad we're here. Oh, what? That's how that works? Yeah, this is a... This is, I'm very happy with the, the stuff we've managed to catch this episode. These guys are eating over here. Oh, come on. Come on, this doesn't call for a donation. Look at the experience you're getting over here. It's so dark. Raining. Is this still at zero? 20 bucks? Did they just drop? Yeah, I think they might have just dropped some cash in. Good. Now, if it's raining, they can tuck back in if they want to. I wonder if... Hmm. How do I get more people up there? Oh, there's people waiting on the train here. I think that's just it. It's like they're they're taking their time to get up there. Because uh, it is so far away from the entrance, right? There's not much you can do about that, but but they do come through, it seems. Are people coming through over here? I know they're coming through downstairs. Jeez, where am I? Here I am. Go down over here. I know people were down here moments ago. Beginning of this episode. Hmm. Pretty barren. Pretty barren. You gotta figure out a way to to bring more of them here. We got vendors, I've got washrooms, I've got the polar bear views, but there needs to be something unique also. One of the best puns. But there has to be something else. Punning's not doing the trick, evidently. Where are you? There you are. Get back in here. Get back in here. I should really get on this. I said get back in here. Get back in here. No, no, not that way. Not that way. No, no, no. Back. Yes. <laughs> what is that animation? <laughs> oh my god, it's terrible is what it is. Alright, let's, um, I'm sorry, but that's just not a good one. Go ahead and raise this for now, all right? Stop their escapes. I want the sun to come up, and then we can start our time lapse. because, uh, man, I've got some ideas. I'm really excited. I don't know how well I'll be able to execute them. Uh, it might be a little grandiose, but I've got my references set up. This is part of the reason why I wanted to, you know, call it last session was I was just like, eh, not feeling comfortable right now. And uh, when it comes to, like, creative executions, that can be one of the worst things you do. And I'm so glad I waited, because now I've got some ideas. And again, hopefully I've got the pieces I need to pull it all off, but uh, we'll see, we'll see. I do need to fix the mountains up a little bit. I mean, many of you were mentioning that the shapes don't feel that great. So we'll see, I'll see what I can do. And uh, some of you were also suggesting that having this train station here and the gondola down over here might be overkill. I don't disagree, though I like the idea of the train station. So I'm curious uh, which is preferred. I mean, it's a quick way to get from place to place, right? Like... Oh, of course now it's got to snow. Of course it's, it's got to snow. That's because it's January, folks. January of the year 100. 100 years, not the year 100, but of the 100th year of our zoo. 100 years of our zoo. That's crazy. That's crazy. Like, this zoo has existed through World War I. Like, there's a, there's a census scale. Wow, there is a census scale. If it's 2020, subtract 100. Well, hopefully the zoo doesn't get hit by, you know, the Great Depression in about 10 years' time. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's a... Uh... Or, hold on, now I want to see... 11-11, somebody's thinking about me. 11-11 on the 11th of February, what are the chances? Um, now I want to see actually if, uh, when we had our bankruptcy, if we were actually where we would be if it was the Great Depression 
if this zoo is actually was was made a hundred years ago. Are you, you you get what I mean? Because <laughs> that would that would that'd be fitting. All right, well, while it's snowing, why don't we take a look at some other animals? Uh, I don't think there's much. Is there a lot of management stuff I need to do here? We've got um, people coming through. People are overall happy. Um, money's being made. Conservation credits being made. So we did trade out some animals. It's great. Uh, we've taken a look at all the issues we've had. Animals fighting for alpha status is okay. We've got a new thing over here. Breed three new exhibit animals of different species. Fair enough. That's just a matter of time, really. Oh, they're so cute. Just taking a nap over here away from the snowfall. Just so cute. And y'all don't really mind being in the snow? Okay, fair enough. That's up to you. They heard me coming. Lots of, uh, lots of our uh, pronghorn antelope are maturing as well, so I imagine we're going to see some disagreements over there shortly. Let's go ahead and sort that out before it becomes a problem. You're not matured. <laughs> so cute. I love the noise they make as well. Oh, there's too much snow. Really? How did I not catch that sooner? You have too much snow as well? You're fine. So we can lower the snow a little bit. Let's go ahead and do that. Didn't realize it was that much of a problem. Did we put one down. Put a heater down where? Put a heater down up here. Let's do the trick. Hopefully. Danger animals escape. Where do you get out from now? Are you serious? You can climb that? I mean, I should have checked. I guess they can get out from over here. Come on now. Get back in there. There we go. I mean, what I could do, the other option is, of course, I could, if I edit the barrier, move this further out. Move you out this way. Move you out this way. That should stop counting it as escapes. See what that does. Vanessa is about to pass away. That's two. Are you kidding me? For every happy moment, there's got to be an unhappy one, I suppose. Ah, there we go. And another one. All right, let's go ahead and pause. Call the vet. Animals fight. I knew it. I knew what knew, knew, knew the ratio was going to become a problem. All right, I need to check if this pack is sustainable still. Do we have... You're getting kind of old. You're getting kind of old. Geralt, you're still the alpha and you're young enough. Do you have a mate? Vanessa is an option. Fenrir, too old. Hold on. Vanessa, too old. Fenrir, too old. Zaire, too old. Emberly, inbreeding. Well, Geralt is the better gene, so let's go ahead and put you on some contraceptives. And it seems as though we have to get ourselves a new female timber wolf. Check our animals over here. Got only six. Fenrir's area, yeah, too old. Yeah, I guess we um get a new female in. Damn. It's not a problem, but didn't think it would come to it. Our pack became so you know self-sustaining for a while. So Manuel and Watkins still haven't gone. That's fair. That's fair. If you look at our trade history, what has gone? 200, 300, 150, 500. It's decent, decent. I was made a right call on those um, on these tortoises. 500 for Pablo. Easy. Because there were there were none on the market. That's how it works. Supply and demand. There was no supply. There must have been demand. Uh, fair. That's good. Uh, feeling pretty comfy about that. Which means if we're looking at an option, some of y'all are mentioning is like, hey, stop being so cheap. <laughs> and I agree. I should stop being so cheap. We've got money. We've got conservation credits, rather. Timberwolf. Let's see. No, I need a female. No, no, no. It doesn't matter how much money I'm willing to spend if you're all males. I need a... I need the... I need a Timberwolfette. <laughs> oh. Oh, give me... How, uh, why are there not even any available for just money? I need to remember this. If I don't do this by the end of the session, if someone could please <laughs> mention it in the comments. I should remember, but there's so much going on lately in the zoo that it's easy to uh, have it slip by me. So I just, you know, I've, it always helps when y'all remind me in the comments. Um, anyway, look at that train coming through. A little steam trail. Oh, that's so pretty. That's so pretty. I love it. Okay, 
let's get to work, I think, on our time lapse. I mean, I've got uh, some good progress over here. Again, this whole thing, I kind of want to make it into a complex. And initially, I was thinking, uh, I'll be honest, I was thinking kind of small in hindsight. But uh, after looking at some references and thinking about this a bit more and coming at it with a fresh mind, and I think that's the most important part, coming at it with a fresh mind, um, I've got... Uh, Oh, I've got some plans. I've got some plans. I want to mention also, sorry, before I dive into the time lapse. So uh, let me know what y'all think. I'm okay with a gondola as well as a train station. Between the two, part of me would prefer a train station because of my plans over here. Um, but I, I think we can get away with doing both. I think we can get away with doing both. Um, I also know that if I do put a train station over here, I have to make it free so people can get on and leave they, can, they it was mentioned very very clearly that if someone gets off here doesn't have any money in their pockets and then has to leave they're stuck here uh unless i add a path connection so i'll add i'll make this area free for the trains and i do have to add a staff path so people can't keep uh littering on which note or rather so that litter gets cleaned up and like i said on which note go ahead and stop these people from messing up my space here all right a couple bins should do the trick folks it's uh i got a nice there we go starting view it's time lapse time let's do it all right folks this is going to be a classic case of me biting off more than i can chew in one time lapse so i apologize for that however it's all for a good cause because um wow i'm really happy with how this ends up Personally, I mean, as always, I'm curious to hear your thoughts, but I think uh, I think we're headed on the right track. Uh, first things first, I get distracted by the uh, staircase over here. I don't know why I decided to focus on this thing first, but I guess it's because I had uh, I had a vision, and this was the first step to that vision, and I wanted to get the ball rolling with this, I suppose. Um, but uh, nonetheless, this is what I start with. I decide to build a stairwell over here. So uh, again, like I was mentioning uh, last time uh, in the last session, uh, the first thing that comes to mind with these mountain monasteries is uh, stairs. Lots and lots and lots of stairs and steeper stairs than this. Um, significantly steeper stairs than this, but obviously the game has its limitations. Uh, and I wanted to make sure that the uh, stairs we have over here fit that kind of aesthetic. So the first step was to uh, get rid of the curved stairs we had, replace them with a straight uh, set of stairs, and, um, and and get this done. Now, these kinds of stairs, I mean, it's actually all monasteries, Tibetan, uh, um, uh, or rather, I should say, I guess, uh, uh, Buddhist monasteries, so Tibet, you know what I mean. Um, if you've ever been to... Uh, 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 Mont Saint Michel, for example, like e even Christian monasteries, it's like stairs are a thing. Uh, there's got to be, a, you know what? I'm gonna look it up. There's got to be a connection there somewhere, right? With stairs, the idea of going up and with effort. I don't know. Uh, nonetheless, step one was to get that done, and I'm really happy with how it's looking and feeling. It's you know the same trick that we used for the India region. Just get those pillar pieces from the East Asia section and just slightly clip them through. Uh, so they look right and then you can see i kind of add terrain around it so what i'm going to do a fair bit of uh today and in future you know uh, sessions with this uh enclosure as well is i'm going to try and build the terrain around some of our uh placements um and i'm going to be using a natural like the the rocks and stuff that we can place as well and you can see i kind of think about that right now uh and then the camera freaks out and i go back to thinking about it uh, ultimately i do not do it this session um, because I'm not entirely set on what I want to do. It's really unfortunate. I wish this angled uh, wall top thing was available with the, the regular type of wall. So I'm going to have to build this using other stone pieces and, and stuff. And I was looking at my references to see what kind of coloration and stuff is used. So I might use those red pieces, uh, the red wooden pieces, uh, to make like the trim, so to speak. I don't know. I've, I've got some th thinking to do there. So I set it aside for now and moved on to what I knew uh, uh, how I'd like to execute, which is the uh, the flooring. Uh, so again, using, I believe these are wall pieces, uh, and using them for flooring instead, because even when they're not covered in snow, they look absolutely, you know, perfect. And you'll see as we get further, you'll see how they look uh, when they're not covered in snow. I really like how they look. I might need to break the tiling up somehow. I think the way I'll do that, I think once we add a roof and like benches and stuff to this area, we'll have that problem solved. Um, but I think it'll make a really cool viewing spot up there. I might swap the uh, circular thing out for a grid-based, more, you know, square um, viewing platform. Uh, might as well use up all the uh, the available space there, right? 
And, and then we move on over here. And I apologize for how, just how bright the snow is. It's like blinding me right now as I'm trying to record this time lapse. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so the next step for me was like proof of concept on buildings. So I wanted to start with a small one just to see if I could execute it properly. And uh, I have one particular reference I'm using in terms of uh, guidance uh, to try and, and, and make this look as realistic as possible. Again, I have minimal personal real life exposure uh, to this form of uh, of architecture. What I do have is what I saw when I was in Japan. That was many years ago now, and I do have to go back. Beautiful country. Um, in beautiful in, in more ways than one use of that word. Uh, but all I have to work on is my memory of that, and that's not necessarily exactly accurate for Tibetan style. Um, so I apologize for any, you know, inaccuracies and things like that, but, uh, you just, you'll see I'm struggling a little bit with the grid as always. It doesn't make sense to me sometimes. It's like, okay, well, it's the same group and you'll lock up at one spot, but you won't lock up at another and you'll keep jumping back and forth. That stuff starts to frustrate me a little bit and, and I'm sure you'll notice that. Uh, but I, I, I make my way through, you know, persevere and, and, and start putting down some windows and stuff instead. Um, but I'm really happy with how this looks now that I've kind of sorted it out. I uh, need to figure out how to make these jumps a little bit prettier, where it goes from the straight up and down to the slightly curved walls. I need to figure out how to make that a prettier um, angle, but obviously one thing that can be used is vegetation to help cover it up, and I think that looks really nice as well. It's not just a shortcut to hiding uh, glaring issues, it's also, I think I like, uh, I think, I know I like how that looks. Uh, now it's time for a second layer on top of this, you know, it's a pretty traditional classic expectation of this architectural style. Uh, I'm pretty happy with yeah how that looks and feels overall. I mean, geez. Right? I mean, sticking out of the mountain like that, it feels like it belongs. Um, it's got all the right pieces, it's got the right colors. Uh, it does need some more maybe decorative elements, but it's definitely getting there, I, I, I would think. Um, but uh, yeah, you can see me adding a little bit of color over here, just trying to make sure this all blends correctly and properly. Again, using those East Asia uh, painted pieces because I can, uh, if I want to recolor them, I can. Adjusting the roof over there. But uh, yeah, then now I just copy that over to this side because uh, again, I want this whole thing to be a complex, right? So it's going to be multiple uh, towers, maybe some little, I don't know, if I'll do like little houses or something. I'm wondering if I want to do a marketplace kind of a thing as well. Might not be a bad idea if people get off the train over here, right? Um, but you can see over here again, just kind of a little bit of struggle, but uh, overall it's, it's fine. Uh, and this one's going to be a really tall tower. I do wonder if I should make less of it stone looking back at it right now. Again, hindsight, right? Just not sure if it's too much stone, but uh, I do break it up actually because I decide to put down a lower level basically that sticks out a little bit. Now I'm personally really happy with uh, how this is looking. I kind of build a little courtyard for it. Um, here you can see a little, yeah, like a little, uh, exposed courtyard area, then the inner walls are going to get rooftops and stuff. Uh, got to adjust some of these trees around as well, but that's no big deal. But yeah, I mean, geez, it's, it's coming together quite nicely. Uh, and this is, obviously, this is all very snowed up. If it wasn't snowed up, it might be a bit more colorful and vibrant, so we'll make up for it with our lighting for sure. Uh, and we do have some other pieces coming through, some other um, uh, elements that we integrate that uh, help it feel a little bit more colorful, because I don't want it to be just grays and whites and you know, a pop of color here and there. I do want it to feel a bit more vibrant. And you can see here, like I was saying, I'm just struggling with some of these construction pieces. It's like, how, why are they not fitting <laughs> how I need them to? And I know it's on me. I know there are people out there that can execute it just fine. Uh, I know it's on me. I'm not blaming the game, but uh, it's my struggle. Like, watch this. Like, what is with this corner? I could move one of the pieces, but I can't move the rest of the piece. I don't know, whatever. <laughs> Nonetheless, I find my solutions here and there. Uh, I'll make it work. Um, and, and, and we'll move on shortly. But that, that one corner was the bane of my existence for a moment there. Uh, over here, adjusting the rooftop, making sure it's nicely aligned and kind of snapped down over there. And then bringing these floor pieces over again. Uh, that's the thing, like when I start the time lapse, I try to build things that I will be able to reuse. And that way, when, you know, just like fatigue kicks in or when I start, you know, running out of ideas or need something to jumpstart my... Um, ideation process again, I can go back to something that I've already done, which was something I can reuse, and I put that down, and then that resets my mind a little bit. Just another, I don't know, I have, every once in a while, like, throwing out ideas of, like, uh, how to, uh, I don't want to say how to be creative, I'm, I, I, I'm, no, I'm, no, I'm no, no teacher in that world, but uh, how to uh, um, evoke, I guess, 
a certain uh, approach. And again, it's different for everybody, but this is what works for me. Um, and you can see over here, of course, the terrain and the pathing don't really cooperate. So I have to go into those rocks and get them in. I don't mind. I, I wanted to use them anyway. And they actually have a really nice texture. They break up the uh, monotony of the terrain a little bit. And I really like how they look. So I'll be doing a lot more of that. This was just more uh, temporary and placeholder just to get a feel for how it looks because I opened the menu and I was like, let's just do some of it now. Really liking how it feels. Um, and it's kind of funny. I'm doing all this stuff, which is just decor. Haven't really taken care of animal needs so far in this time lapse, which is a bit silly. Uh, but it is what it is, I suppose. Um, and you can see, I once again, I break up this uh, section over here. I didn't like how that connection looked uh, between the curved bit and the straight wall bit. So I added another, you know, curvy rooftop thing. I don't know what it's called. The eaves there. But uh, it breaks it up nicely, I think. And it, it makes it feel a lot more... Uh, interesting, I think, as well. And adding a couple windows here for a little pop of color. It's unfortunate the uh, tall windows don't fit here nicely, so I decided to do uh, this instead. It feels like, uh, you know, it fits the bill. Uh, and then you got to just adjust the, the, the door there. But, I mean, you're feeling pretty good about this. I mean, this is... I'm feeling pretty happy about this. And, then, of course, you can't... You can't be a Tibetan monastery. You can't be the Himalayas without at least a couple of these, right? gotta have these and uh don't know what i don't know why but they are a common sight these flags uh, and i thought you know what that's a nice way to add that vibrance this is the other element i was talking about it's a nice way to add the vibrance it's a nice way to uh get these parts mingling with each other in an interesting way that we haven't seen anywhere else in the zoo uh, and i really like how it's working there is a limitation because it's a curved piece there is a limitation of how to join multiples together to extend it so it's a little funky looking but uh, overall i think it works quite nicely and there you can see i've connected it to what'll be a viewing platform and i actually think this circular path over here as well we, we might grid it out and make it a square make a little marketplace area down there potentially or just keep it as a, a viewing area but uh, yeah, just adding a couple more flags i need to add a bunch more of those as well there's a lot of work to do here still um, but you can see how it's all starting to kind of come together uh it marries nicely into the uh the mountains it marries nicely into the overall aesthetic this wooden great suggestion changing the barriers into wood i think also marries in nicely with the overall aesthetic we're going for here uh but despite all that and despite me adding this extra layer which i think definitely was the metaphorical icing on this tower cake uh there's a lot more to do but this is it for this time lapse folks we'll continue next time all right, folks, that's all the time I have for today. Unfortunately, I have to make sure uh, this gets rendered in time so it actually releases on time. I apologize for that. Would have, wouldn't have minded going on for a little bit longer, but I think it's a good idea for me to step away from this time lapse a bit as well. Uh, as, as you may have noticed, it went through a couple of... Uh, it evolved a couple of times as I went building. That's the thing. I look up references and the references give me a good idea of what I would like to do. Uh, but then as you start using the building pieces, sometimes that, that kind of changes. Like I really wanted to get more. Oops, sorry. I want to get more of this um, uh, flag thing going. It's a very common sight. Uh, I really wanted to get more of that going. Unfortunately, there's only this one type of piece which is kind of curved. So to, you know, make it look like it's uh, physically possible while also getting the feel I want, there are some limitations that I'm trying to work around. But, uh, you know, now I have an idea of how I'm going to be forced to use these, so to speak. Maybe not the best use of words, but you know what I'm getting at. Um, you know, might want to add more coming down from up top there. Might definitely going to add more over here. I definitely spent way too much time over here for a time lapse that's supposed to be dedicated to over here. But this was sort of my my test, you know, to see like, okay, how does it look from a distance? Oh, man, <laughs> I actually really like how that looks. Oh, look at them piercing through the sky there off in the distance. I really like how that looks, actually. Oof, I was waiting to uh, to do that view out of the time lapse because I wanted to get uh, I wanted to have that initial <laughs> reaction, I guess. Uh, really happy with how that looks, so I'm glad I spent the time. And then obviously that was the building block off of which this came, and uh, feeling pretty good about this. Now, there's a lot of different styles of monasteries, of course. Um, you know, there's like the, the hanging monasteries, there are the extremely vibrant green and and, and orange and, and yellow. One. Green and yellow, I think, is the color combination. Uh, but I feel like this way it kind of marries and transitions into uh, this space. We're kind of using some of the architectural pieces perhaps ironically, from both uh, culture packs over here, East Asia and um, India. Uh, so it's a kind of a nice marriage. 
overall really happy with how this is feeling. Definitely want to make some adjustments, though I like how this area is looking as well. I wonder if I almost make this into a market space. Um, you know, like the market at the base of the monastery. And then I add some fake stairs, not real stairs, but fake stairs uh, to gain access to, uh, you know, this tower over here, thinking of adding some more towers around the bend over here. So as you go around in the train, you get a really nice look at some monasteries. And as you go around this way, oh, look at that. Like I'm, I'm really pleased with uh, how this is feeling. Uh, now, unfortunately, I didn't actually work on, you know, actual habitat kind of stuff, which is a little silly of me, I think, but I, I just got carried away maybe. Really happy with this though. So yeah, I'm, I'm thinking, yeah, I'm thinking we add uh, some more towers. Like I'm going to add over here. Many of you were like, oh, do a cave tunnel. Totally, that's 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 what I'm thinking. I'm thinking it's sort of like a cave tunnel that acts as a hard shelter with a little bit of an outcropping, which is why I got rid of what I did last time because it was too much. So I'm going to do that over here. So it'll kind of like, um, you know, dig in a little bit uh, like so. They'll be able to hide in there. Obviously this will, you know, creep out over top of them. Um, and so it'll give them a nice kind of cave to tuck into. Uh, maybe I shouldn't have done this right now to exemplify, but, uh, but yeah, I think that'll be nice. And some of you were suggesting putting a glass roof down here, which I think is a really interesting idea. Uh, so you kind of can get a view of them running around from underneath. I, I'm curious to see how guests and all react to that kind of a viewpoint. So I think I might actually build that because, again, at the end of the day, uh, yeah, while I'd like to use these realistic floor tiles and stuff, uh, the, the experience, the viewing experience matters as well. So I might do that um to to help make that uh, a little bit more interesting some of y'all were pointing out that the view from down here up there is really bad uh if if the um leopards are spending a lot of time resting then the guests won't really have a view of them which uh, you're you're absolutely right i might need to bring some of their toys and stuff down over here so they have a better I mean, their food's down here so they'll be down here pretty often uh the other option the other option is uh and i like this uh we could build the path out over here um let's see how would i want to because one idea was to take stairs up this way and have another viewing spot up over here uh, or the other idea is to to pull the path out and have another viewing area up over here so it would sort of be like let me see if we can't uh, mock it up a little bit um let's see It would sort of be like, don't, don't mess around with the train. Just be as you are, please. Nah, doesn't want to let me. Okay, okay. I do this kind of a thing. Hmm. Doesn't really work. I mean, I'd have to re-sculpt the train, which is not a problem. Obviously, something we can do. I can cut this. But, but you see what I'm getting at, right? Like, you kind of get up over here, and there would be a viewing platform um, over here or so. So you'd be able to see them, and it would marry into the hillside over here. I might do that. So there's a lot of maybes and what-ifs ands ands and buts and whatnots, but uh, I think this is where I'm going to have to call it a session. Like I said, I do have to be cognizant of my like render times and things like that. Where are our snow leopards? Are they are they shy? Are they hiding in the corner somewhere? I want to get a nice... Uh... Oh. This is a problem. <laughs> this is a problem. You're able to get out over here, aren't you? So. Uh... Go ahead and do this before I forget next session. But... Check you up like so, right? Are you actually escaped or are you still within? You are still within my thing. Let's go ahead and put you down. I see where I might get a nice thumbnail as well. Let's put you down over here. I think I can move them specifically. I don't know. We'll find out. Uh, let's go ahead and hit play for a second over here. I, I'm 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 pretty happy with how today's time lapse went. I like how. Uh, things are looking. Oh, there's the box coming through. In comes. Wow, look at that lag. Oh my god. Hang in there, computer. There we go. Bam. This little escape artist has been a bit of a bit of a troublemaker today. Look at those little confetti there. All right, folks. This is where we're gonna call it a session. I think that looks. I think that looks pretty great. Feeling good. It's nowhere near complete. Obviously, gonna spend another session on this at the very least. Hopefully, a longer one. 
uh, is the plan at least. And then pretty soon we have to take care of our uh, Centennial. We got to do something big for it, right? So I don't want to step away from this. I do want to complete this first. Next session might be stuck on pause all the way through. God knows we've got the money for it. Uh, but folks, this is where we're going to call it a session. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, you know what to do. Let me know by leaving a like and a comment down below. Let me know your thoughts on everything as well. As always, I'm always looking forward to feedback. And just as a reminder, folks, if you are a channel member or patron, make sure you let me know your name requests as well. Again, only for channel members and patrons. That, though, I do still have the Snow Leopard um, enclosure unnamed. I saw a lot of great name suggestions. Still holding off on naming it. I usually save that for last. So keep those coming as well. And that, of course, is open to everybody uh, who wants to get involved. Folks. Hope you had a good time. As always, a massive thanks goes out to all of my channel members and patrons for supporting the channel on a monthly basis. You keep us alive and running smoothly, and there were some new add-ons in the last month, and I appreciate that greatly. Thank you very much for joining in, and thanks to all of you who have been along for the ride for a very long time. It means a lot to me. Uh, apart from that as well, of course, thank you all for watching along, liking, commenting, subscribing, sharing. It all makes a massive difference in keeping a series like this alive and going well. So thank you very much from the bottom of my heart, and until next time, cheers.